गुड आफ्टरनून लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन नमस्कार प्रणाम टुडे आई एम हियर टू शेयर माय थॉट अबाउट वाटर एंड मेक ए रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई वर्क विद वाटर वी यूज वाटर एवरी डे इन आवर डेली लाइफ वी आर सो डिपेंडेंट ऑन वाटर दैट एवरी एक्शन वी टेक इन सम और अदर वे अफेक्टेड बाय वाटर और इंडस्ट्रीज रन ऑन वाटर और इकोनॉमीज रन ऑन वाटर और एनर्जी सेक्टर्स रन ऑन वाटर और दिस वेरी प्लेटफॉर्म ऑन विच आई एम स्टैंडिंग वेन दिस वॉज बिल्ट वाटर वॉज यूज फॉर दिस द एयर विच वी आर ब्रीदिंग एंड विच इज अलाउविंग एस टू यू नो लिव इन दिस एटमोसफियर हैज वाटर कंटेंट इन इट विच इज अलाउविंग एस टू यू नो लिव इन दिस कंडीशन वाटर इज ए स्टिल वाटर इज ए मिस्ट्री विच इज स्टिल टू बी अंडरस्टूड इज ए कंपाउंड इट्स ए मोलिक्यूल विच डज नॉट बिहेव usual it does not show usual properties usually when we cool down a molecule or material it shrinks water expands and it forms the ice floats on the water water in the ambient condition of earth it should not have been in the liquid phase it should have been in the vapor phase but just because of the mysteries of the wonderful forces it's in the liquid phase on the earth even though being such an a wonderful element on earth water is in problem and since the water is in problem the human kind is also in problem this is a picture of india showing 54% of india is living in high or very high st- water stress region 780 million people globally 163 million people in india does not have access to the clean drinking water in india we have varieties of problem which causes this uh, water stress region we have arsenic problem which around 63 million people in india are living in eight arsenic affected states and does not get clean drinking water in india around 11.4 million people are staying in fluoride affected states even my home state rajasthan and this very state telangana is most affected by fluoride we get water contaminated every year by the floods happening in the gangetic belt or the southern part of india and even more bigger problem is that we have many regions in india where we don't have water at all we don't have water because the natural water reservoirs has been dried up there is no surface water or there is no enough infrastructure laid down to supply water to these villages water is such involved in the daily actions that even out of 17 sustainable development goals declared by united nation 16 are directly dependent or correlated to the water this is a picture of me so i come from a village in rajasthan where whenever i go back home i collect water from the municipal water pipe system this is here me collecting water and then we take it back to our home nowadays the scene is that this piped water does not supply water even in village we are buying water tanker which was a usual scenario in the metro cities my life is dependent so much on the water that i don't just depend on it water actually runs my life it actually runs my bread and butter it gives me the financial help the social duties everything and i'm happy to let it do so it does more than enough for me and by doing this i'm also completing my social duties and ext- i get the free extra credit for it so i work at iit madras and with visual technologies we started visual technologies 2 and 1/2 years back and with our work at iit madras with professor pradeep who was recently conferred with the padma shri award for his contribution in science and technology we st- when we started the work back in 2013 we thought we will come up with a device which can give you clean drinking water in flood affected areas we came up this with this water purifier bottle which can give you drinking water in flood affected area if you see here in a bottle there is a water which is muddy and on the other glass we are having the clean drinking water this is a very simple design which performs four stages of filtration and removes the bacterial and geo specific chemical contaminant from the drinking water we received a gandhian young technological award for this work this work now this is a issue when we have flooded water but there are issues when we don't have water something similar to my village where people have to travel to get water according to a unicef report globally every day around 200 million hours are spent by women and children just to transport water 
just to put that in perspective that is equal to 25 million young people working for a single day just to transport the water so we are spending so much of time only for the transportation of water but even though we do that we are not ensured that what the water which we are collecting is drinking water because the surface water is contaminated it's not all the time pure rolling water systems has been available in india we fill the water in it and roll it to our houses and we can uh, so so that we does not carry the water on our head we are free from that load but since the water origin point is not pure we have to carry this we have to further purify it our home our contribution to this was that we put in a water purification system such efficient that by the time you travel back to your home within the 30, 30 to 40 minutes the water which comes out from this roller is a drinking it's a portable water so you see here is a, perform, a graph showing the performance what in so this is 10000 colonies of bacteria comes down to uh, 10 something within 40 minutes this is a uh, right, the other problem was the arsenic problem which i discussed so the iit madras team worked on the arsenic solutions and they have developed a solution which is very affordable and around 6 million people are ri right now using it in india right now i'm a part of a team which is working on the even advanced version of the material this work this work which we are doing is supported by millennium alliance uh, and which is headed by federation of indian chambers of commerce in india and industry and we were given a grant to pilot this project in up once the project is piloted this will be most affordable arsenic removal technology in india now this is a scene when we have contaminated water and we can purify it but what happens when we don't have water last year on 19 june 2019 chennai zero day was declared for chennai chennai did not had any water residents of chennai was forced to get tanker water while paying 10 to 50 paisa per liter and even wait, waiting for that water for 1 to 15 days in a time when we can get food in 30 minutes we were not getting water on the time even a year in 2017 cape town was declared a zero day india's 21 more cities are on the same line and on the verge of running out of water with such sort of scenario we have to look for any other alternate where we can get drinking water right now in this hall where we are standing today we have more than 100 liter of water available in air and similarly in the earth's ambient condition we have around 1.42 million 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 liters of water available at any point of given time locally that concentration keeps going depleting or getting replenished because of the global air current which brings humidity from the oceans but that was is still there it's a renewable source of water and which we can tap in it's available at all location of earth so our my next work on which i have been working involved the most and is being implemented is at mosprey water generator so we follow the systems the way the nature does in nature we have two most celebrated example which performs the atmospheric water harvesting stenocara beetle and the cacti plant stenocara beetle is a beetle which lives its whole life in namib desert where there is no water but still it survives so what how does it survives so the wings of uh, namib beetle has a certain precise physical uh, structures and with chemical functionalities which are hydrophilic and hydrophobic which allows us to condense the humid humidity available in the air and then drink it so once the humidity is collected on its uh, wings it usually go on the top of the sand dunes stay there inclined for 4 to 5 hours and the water comes to his mouth and that's how he survives his whole life similarly the cake type plant it has thorns a small tips which which are the nucleation site for water to be condensed and as the tips goes to the stem the diameter is getting increased and with the increased diameter the water is actually uh, getting a gradient of laplace force which is driving water to move to the stem and from there water drops to the root of the cacti plant these are two you know a phenomenal example which are best studies in the science literature we follow something similar to the cacti plant so this is a lab setup which we use uh, in the lab when we started the work on the condensation Uh, we can do atmospheric water harvesting by actually two ways condensation or by the adsorption but if you go by the adsorption method we will have to use a system 
even something similar to you know with the volume and footprint of this axe with it would give you around 10 to 20 liters of water a day or maximum 10 to 30 liters of water a day but if you do the design a system with condensation based technology the same volume and the footprint will give us more than 300 liters of water with with this capacity to uh, build with this capacity to build more water we started working with the condensation and this is our work in our lab so when actually we were doing this work in 2015 uh, so we had two labs at iit madras and uh, I used to work till late night. So what happens one day in, in my other friends from the other lab usually calls me, uh, give, you know, give me prank call saying that this is professor. So one day actually professor called to talk about the one experiment which we were going to do. So he called and says me, hey, this is professor. And I was like, yeah, I thought I was under the assumptions that this is a prank call. Like, yeah, okay, so this is Professor Pradeep. I know what, so what, we, what's, what we should do. And he gets like irritated and like, hey, this is your supervisor, Professor Pradeep. I was like, yeah, I know, what next? <laughs> but then he really gets irritated and he's like, uh, what, are you, what happened to you? Are you in the lab? And I'm like, dude, you have called to the landline. What do you think, where, where else I would be? And he's really mad at me. And his tone gets a little stiffer and he's like, Ramesh, I called you to discuss an experiment. And then I was like, okay, maybe he's the right person to talk. And then we discuss an experiment, which uh, we usually do the experiment in night uh, when the humidity content is higher in the atmosphere and the temperature is low. So this is an experiment of same. So this is a small surface, two centimeter by two centimeter. So if you see here in this video, we are having a wire mesh which has structure similar to the cacti on which the water from the atmosphere is getting condensed. The droplets are forming. The droplets get bigger, they coalesce together. And once droplet reaches to a certain size, usually a few millimeters, it gets collected by the hydrophilic surface kept on the back side of the wire mesh. And from there, water drops down. So this is actually experiment happening. And this is a published work. Similarly, so this is what you saw, is water, it, water harvesting happening at few millimeter scale. I'll show you in this video, these are the images of micrometer scale, even lesser than the strand of air. Usually one drop, it's something even lesser than 50 micrometer. Probably you cannot see with the naked eye. These are small drops which gets bigger, they coalesce together, and then they transport to the, collect, uh, the water collection tray. Using the same technology, we, have produced, we are making units which can give 100 liters, 30 liters, 400 liters, or 2,000 liters of drinking water a day. Till now, we have dispensed more than 1 lakh liters of drinking water using the same technology. The same we uh, exhibited to Prime Minister Modi when he visited IIT Madras. And even during this uh, exhibition, we had an incident when, uh, so we were supposed to make a uh, you know, demo to Prime Minister at 11 o'clock. And just because to security clearance, we were supposed to report at the venue at 7 o'clock. So I'm going to the venue and uh, security suddenly asked me that you cannot keep your, you cannot go with your vehicle, you have to park your vehicle and walk. Since the venue was uh, quite distance from the venue, it, it, you know, it was 8 o'clock by the time I reached venue. After making so many requests, I initially I was like, you cannot go to the venue, your stall has to be empty. After making certain requests, I was allowed, and I was actually uh, escorted by NSG commandos. So for the, those 10, 15 seconds, I has the NSG security, which Prime Minister gets, escorting me to the venue. So now, while we are doing this, uh, this is good, but we always try to have a system which can be more sustainable. The system which we are using right now are operated on grid power, but we need to have a system which can directly run without any, in any form of grid power needed. So we are trying to have system which works with the, with the materials which can collect the humidity content or the water content from the atmosphere just without any additional uh, energy spend and releases back to uh, in, in the water form when we need during just by exposing it to the sunlight or any other stimuli, any of the natural energy stimuli. So this is a form, uh, this is a schematic uh, shown in the, uh, you know, uh, at the molecular scale. The same if you do at the bigger level, this would be something like this. We would have a material which is just getting a cloud in, into it and releasing the same cloud in form of water when exposed to sunlight or when exposed to heat or any other uh, natural energy stimuli, this kind of system would be 
very much sustainable, would be green, and it would be an ideal atmospheric water generator to have with. While we are doing this, we need to answer certain questions. The technologies which we are developing for even purifying the water, are these technologies really sustainable? Are we creating the good positive impact on the nature? Is these technologies carbon negative? Are these technologies really green? Because, and the tech, we need to come to a technology when we can answer these questions and say, yeah, all these questions are good. And uh, we, we are carbon negative, we are green, we are sustainable, and we are having a good impact on uh, Earth. So let's come together, join our hands, and invent it or develop a technologies which, can, uh, which provides a clean drinking water the same way in nature does. Because when we were born, we were blessed with a system to provide drinking water which completely nurtured the animal and plant life on this earth. Let's join our hands together and make this world even better place by, making, by having good clean drinking water. Thank you. Thank you.